everybody. Hello, I'm Ryan. I'm Bethany. And we are Ryan and Bethany Board Game Reviews. And today we'll be talking about Star Wars The Deck Building Game. This is designed by Caleb Grace and it is published by Fantasy Flight. You guys, I'm a big Star Wars nerd. I'm like someone at this table. Okay, so here's the weird thing about Star Wars, right? I just, just let me, before we even talk about the game, let me go on a rant. So I can watch the movies and I can semi enjoy it and I can watch some of the TV shows, right? And I can be like a casual, I enjoy this, this is fine. But you can't do that because then like Star Wars people will think you're a fan, but I don't have any of the fan knowledge. So then like when they try talking to me, all of a sudden I'm anti Star Wars because I don't have any of the fan knowledge. It's like this really weird thing. You're either like in swimming in the deep end or you're not even allowed in the pool. Okay. We'll welcome you in. Yeah, but only if I go to the deep end. I want to play in the like kiddie pool. <laughs> I want a Star Wars kiddie pool. Okay. Yeah. See what I'm saying? You're right. No, you're, you're not wrong about that. <laughs> yeah, you're not wrong. But also, I'm a big fan of like uh, two player deck building combat yes. games. Unlike some people at this table. I don't know what you're talking about all that. Because I keep saying I don't like them, but then I keep reviewing them really well. <laughs> <laughs> so guess what? This is a Star Wars-themed two-player dueling combat deck-building game. And when I heard those things were being combined, I was like, we've got to get our hands on that. We immediately drove to the friendly local game store, picked up a copy, and we've been playing the heck out of it ever since. Especially with our nine-year-old, who is a big Star Wars fan and deck-building yes. fan as well. Yes. Yeah. So in this game... She's in the deep end. <laughs> in this game, you've got a series of bases. All these bases have special abilities. But your job is to knock out the other player's bases before they can knock out your bases. And you're going to be drafting in all of the, you know, the rebels are trying to draft as many rebels into their side. The Empire's trying to draft all the rebel players and cards into their side. And it's maybe some neutral players along the or neutral cards along the way as well. <laughs> Let me give you a quick overview of how to play. All right, here's our setup for Star Wars The Deck Building Game. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out what planets we wanna use. These planets are our base, and that's what we're trying to protect as much as possible. The winning condition in this game is to knock out all the other players' bases. So the starting one, uh, everyone has a starting base, which basically uh, says this is worth eight health, as shown here at the bottom of the card here. And this says start the game with this base in play. The other ones you're gonna be able to choose. Uh, there is a recommended kind of first game uh, cards that you can use, but after that, you're going to choose four of them and you're going to put them underneath your starting base. All right, then you have a starting small deck of 10 cards. It's basically going to give you a little bit of money to get you started with, along with a little bit of combat so you can knock a couple of things out or start doing a little bit of damage. We also have a row of cards out here in the middle of the table. Those are going to be six different cards that you have at any given time, and they're kind of turned sideways, pointing to the various players. So we are the rebel player, so our red rebel cards are going to be facing towards us. If it is a capital ship, they're kind of situated horizontally like that. All other cards are going to be kind of facing vertically. Over here, we have the empire cards. Those are facing away from us in the same configuration. You can only buy your own faction's worth of cards. But over here, we have some neutral cards. So we have some neutral cards that you can buy, and the same thing, those are facing kind of in the middle, so that way every player has access to those. And then, this is the Outer Rim Pilots, that's a whole stack of cards there. It's basically going to give every player a chance to get some more money into their deck so they can purchase more cards. Alright, so over here at the far, far side, I want to point out this is the Force Tracker. The Force Tracker is basically going to allow you to slide up and down on that Force Track. I've actually got it upside down over here, but... What's going to happen is you're going to be able to play cards that move that force up and down in your favor. If that cube is ever closer to your half of the board, that basically means the force is in your favor. The force is with you. Some cards will have that come into play. They might say things like, if the force is with you, draw an extra card or do extra damage or whatever the case is. There are three kinds of currencies in the game. Let me kind of point this all out to you. They're going to be on the top left of a card. So the very, very top left of the card is going to be the price of that card. This is what it takes to purchase this card from the middle row. But then we have these guns here. That's this particular card gives two of the guns. That's going to be the damage that you can deal out. These little boxes here, these little crates, that is your resources. That's going to be what you're going to be able to use to purchase new cards. This card gives you two of those. This bottom ability here, this is the force. So this particular card gives you two force, meaning you're going to be able to move that force tracker twice in your favor towards the bottom of your track. 
And then also it's going to give you some more flavor and text down here as well as possibly some special abilities. This card says you can exile cards uh, from your hand to draw more cards. You do it twice if the force is with you. So this card, again, is going to benefit you if the force is in your favor. Uh, this also shows this little star in front, shows that this is the job of the hut. Uh, this means that there's only one of this card in the deck, this is a unique character. Certain things like generic kinds of troopers or ships do not have that, but characters in specific ships do. And every once in a while that might come into play. Certain cards might also reference things like trooper, or capital ship, or scoundrel, or bounty hunter, or fighter, or whatever the case is. And those are all kind of different tags that could be on different cards, and they might affect one another. So for instance, if you have a card that says, all fighters gain plus one damage, uh, if you have any other cards that say that they are a fighter, obviously they're going to have one stronger amount of damage they can give out that turn. If, on the whole, you're unfamiliar with the concept of deck building games, basically what's going to happen is you have a weak starting hand, switch to weak starting deck of cards, you're going to draw five of those cards into your hand, and then on your turn you're going to be able to use those to do some damage in this case, but also, and if you have any of those crate symbols, that is your currency, that's your money. You're going to be able to use that money to be able to buy cards from this middle row. Now the cards that you use go in your discard pile, but also the cards that you just bought go in your discard pile as well. So now, when you need to draw more cards and you run out of cards in your deck, you're going to take your discard pile full of all your old original cards plus all the new ones that you've bought. You're going to shuffle your hand, all that whole deck together and draw a new hand of five cards. And now you're going to have better cards in your deck than you had before. So each time you go through your deck, you're going to have better and better, stronger and stronger cards in your deck that you're going to be able to use to buy more things uh, in order to do more damage. If you ever buy one of those capital ships, one of the cards that is kind of oriented horizontally, that's going to go out in front of your base. It's going to kind of act as protection. They might have some special abilities as well, but mainly they're there to kind of block your, your base from getting hit. Now, if your opponent was to do some damage to you, it would go to your capital ships first. Damage cannot be spread around though, however. So for instance, if a card provided five damage and you wanted to attack the base over here, well, you'd have to attack these uh, capital ships first. But this particular one would absorb that attack. So it says it's worth four damage. This is how much attacking it would take to kill that card. All five of that would be pointed towards this card, which means that one remaining leftover damage just kind of is wasted. It goes away. And similarly, this is only worth two damage. If you were to attack that with five damage, let's say, uh, it would absorb that entire five damage. It only takes two to kill it, but it would take the entire attack on its own. The one nice thing about attacking your opponent's uh, bases in their capital ships is the damage is kind of permanent. Uh, meaning if you do some damage to it, you get to put cubes on it and they stay there even when the round is done. Now there are ways to heal that off, but from round to round, that's, those cubes are going to stay on there and, and accumulate. And if you ever go above uh, that value, you're going to knock out that base. And now at the beginning of the next turn, that be, everybody will go through those different planets, choose the next one they want to have be active, put that one on top, and do whatever it says. Some bases are going to give you a static ability, meaning they're always going to give you some kind of cool thing on your turn. Other things say when they are revealed, you do something really powerful. So no matter what, they're going to be some kind of a cool benefit. They're always going to be better than your starting base. When you're looking at the middle row and there's cards facing away from you, sometimes you're going to be able to see some kind of a reward in a number facing you, even though the card itself is not facing you. That gives you the opportunity to actually do damage directly to this card before it even gets purchased, and you even get some kind of a reward. In this case, if you do three damage to this Death Trooper while it's still in the row, you're going to get two Force as a reward. Not all cards have that ability, though. For instance, this Imperial Carrier has no numbers facing us, so you cannot do damage to it while it's out in the row. All right, that's a quick overview of how to play. The winning condition, and remember, is to knock out all of your opponent's base cards. If you can do that before they can knock out yours, you're going to be declared the winner. I thought the card lineup in this game was really interesting, unique, and it, and it actually pulled it off really well. So there's cards, as Ryan showed you, that some only one person can buy, some only the other person can buy. You can buy cards based on if they're facing you and then if there's neutral cards and anybody can buy those. And even the cards that are not facing you, there's oftentimes an ability there to where you can like destroy them and you get stuff. And I just thought that was really interesting and it paid off. I didn't feel like um, when we were playing this that even if there was a ton of an opponent opponent's stuff out there, like I said, you could still destroy stuff. So you could still get more stuff fed into that. But I just thought it was really interesting that you have 
separate cards mixed together, but only certain people can have them. But thematically, that makes a lot of sense depending on what side of this um, of this battle that you're on. It, it, would, it wouldn't make sense for me to draft like Luke if I am one of the bad guys, <laughs> right? It just wouldn't make any sense. So they were able to pull it off. It made sense thematically and it actually worked in the gameplay because there were so many cards that were coming out that it didn't feel like one person was getting something and nobody was getting anything. It is a Star Wars game. So I love how the force was represented. You need to have the force show up somehow. How are you gonna do it? Well, you have this tracker, right? That tracks the force, whether it's with the empire or whether it's with, whether it's with the rebels. Yeah. That's a hard thing to say. <laughs> uh, and I liked how sudden, you know, if it was all the way on your side at the beginning of your turn, you got extra resources, which is fantastic. But also a lot of the cards would say things like, if the force is with you, meaning it's on your side of the tracker, you get some kind of a benefit. Uh, and that could be all, all manner of things. Maybe you get to draw extra cards, or maybe you get to get extra resources, or maybe you get to do extra damage, or whatever the case is. Uh, because you played a card that says the force is with you and it's on your side, you're going to do better. But so you both want to have the force on your side. So it's constantly this you know this tug of war between the two players, trying to keep it on your side. Uh, and, it, and it just moves back and forth. Uh, it makes for a lot of tension and made your yeah. card stronger if it was with you, which I liked. You can also um, attempt some combos in this game, which was really fun. You could have your try to get certain um, ships to protect your planet, and characters will interact with that. And the nice thing about those ships is even when they're destroyed, you just shuffle them in and they come back up. So you can still, like, it would suck if you worked towards something and you bought a card to specifically work with that ship, and then all of a sudden somebody destroyed it, and now you can't do anything with it. That didn't happen. You were able to shuffle them back in and try to work with this synergy that you had started to develop. So that was pretty cool. I liked how the idea of kind of taking over the other player's bases, right? Thematically, that made a lot of sense. I liked how the starting ones were all very weak, but then after that, you have to choose which bases you came out with. I liked that you really didn't know when it might be beneficial. Before the game starts, you don't know when yeah. a certain ability might come in handy, but you want to put it into that into your deck just in case... Um, you know, it's going to come handy later, and you're just kind of hedging your bets, basically. Uh, so revealing those is, like, a really fun part of the game. You know, you just had your base destroyed. It sucks. You're behind. Yeah. But then guess what? You get to pull out a new base. It's fresh health. Yeah. And pull out some kind of a cool new ability. Oh, and the nice thing about the bases is that when your base is destroyed, so it happens on the other person's turn, you don't get a new base until it's your turn again. So it's not like you're going to pop up a new base and then they destroy that too. Like I, you just didn't, you weren't able to pummel on it. So you're able to casually, not casually, but it was balanced in that sense. It wasn't right. like somebody just got a good hand and all of a sudden everything's gone. I like how sometimes there was reveal abilities once you do you can reveal it, something yeah. cool happened, and then other times there's this kind of a ability that was always active on your turns that, that gave you some extra kind of a special ability, whatever the case is. So I really like those, using those bases. Yeah, so overall, I liked this game, and I thought it was fun. I do enjoy deck builders, and I like that, you know, the, the two-player deck builder. It's probably not going to be one I'm going to gravitate towards. I, I probably wouldn't choose it. I enjoyed it. It was a good game. I just don't think it's anything that I would choose, but I guess that doesn't matter because Ryan... I like it. <laughs> <laughs> I played a bajillion deck builders, and I'm not even rounding like, when I say a bajillion. Bajillion, like, it's, yeah. Yeah, a bajillion and a, and a half, actually. Because there are even a bajillion <laughs> deck builders. Uh, I've played so many deck builders, and I honestly, I like almost all of them, which is, I don't know what that means, says about me, but I like a lot of the things that this brought new to the table. Yes, I was predisposed to think about it positively just because it's Star Wars, the theming worked out, but also because the theme worked with the mechanisms, right? Everything made sense. I like how you had the capital ships protecting your bases. That yeah. made sense to me. I like how the force was moving around based off of the cards you played. That made sense to me. That you could only draft certain cards. Yeah, the fact that the, yeah. only the uh, the rebels can draft X-Wings because guess what? The Empire never used X-Wings, so why would they ever do that? I, this, all that made sense to me mechanically. Uh, I like the new things that this brought to the deck building genre, despite it being a fairly simple dueling, you know, a yeah. card game, it still had new fresh things in a, with a, a small amount of cards and components. Uh, so I like the heck out of this. Even if Bethany doesn't want to play it with me every time, I know that I've got at least one daughter who's going to be yes. asking for this one over and over again. Clamoring and, for it. Yeah, so this is, a, a, this is a, a lot of fun for me. Everybody, thank you so much for watching it. Don't forget to subscribe so you can see our videos as they come out. If you enjoyed what you saw, consider leaving us a tip 
there is a link down below on how to do that. Until then, you can find us in all of these places. You guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.